the number one best food in the world that can help unclog your arteries, prevent a heart attack and a stroke. This is better than aspirin. Aspirin has been around for 4,000 years. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a tiny little over-the-counter pill that's used for pain, fever, and yes, aspirin has saved a lot of lives. Hundreds of thousands of people over the years have been helped by aspirin. Before 2022, a lot more people were taking aspirin. And I think it was recommended for everyone over the age of 60 to take a baby aspirin every day to prevent heart attacks and stroke. But then a report after 2022 said, no, not everyone should take this because there's some slight minor complications like bleeding ulcers, bleeding in the brain. So aspirin does come with a package. It can cause side effects and it's not for everyone. The reason why a lot of people take aspirin to help prevent a heart attack is because it thins the blood. What I mean by thinning the blood is it reduces the formation of a clot. 80% of all heart attacks and strokes come from a clot, not the blockage of cholesterol building up and forming a plaque, and just as a side note, almost 50% of heart attacks occur between 6 a.m. and 12 noon. And my theory about that is you have higher levels of cortisol in the morning. And both cortisol and adrenaline can increase clotting and increase your chance of getting a heart attack or stroke. This is why you have something called the broken heart syndrome, where a loss of a loved one can increase your chance of getting a heart attack and a stroke by like 2000%. Let me simply explain what aspirin does. In your blood, okay, you have these arteries, right? And you have red blood cells that travel through the arteries. They carry oxygen. You also have white blood cells, your immune cells, but you also have these little things called platelets that are attracted and respond to injury. In other words, if these were platelets and they're responding to an injury, they would start to connect and form a clot. Some people take this other drug called warfarin, which blocks vitamin K1. It prevents that super glue from forming, keeping the blood thinner so you can prevent a clot. What else could do the same thing, but with less side effects, if any side effects? And before I talk about the actual food that will do this, let's talk about the active ingredient in that food that does the magic of preventing this clot formation. And that compound is an omega-3 fatty acid. Now, when I say omega-3, you might think of fish oils, right? And that's true. It's in fish oils, but it's going to be a little more specific than just fish oils in general. In omega-3, you have two things. You have EPA and you have DHA. The real key factor is the EPA part of that omega-3 fatty acid. How does it compare to aspirin, for example? Well, in this study, they showed that EPA worked to decrease clotting comparable to low-dose aspirin. EPA has the ability to stabilize vulnerable arterial placking by decreasing inflammation. And when you decrease inflammation, you also reduce the chance of rupture and having some plaque break off and then float through your artery. There's also another study, 2019, patients were taking EPA, which is the omega-3 fatty acid, and they had significant decrease in plaquing, decrease inflammation, and decreased cardiovascular events by 25%. What's even more interesting is EPA has another effect that goes beyond anti-clotting and it has an effect on your mood. It has the effect of reducing cortisol and adrenaline. Remember I talked about that? So we have this additional benefit, which could also prevent the clotting formation. How does EPA work compared to aspirin and warfarin, which are blood thinners? Instead of making super glue, you'll get platelets that float around, but they're not as sticky. The omega-3 fatty acid EPA replaces a key ingredient so the super glue can't even be formed in the first place. Why do I like that approach so much? Is because there's no side effects. Aspirin and warfarin have side effects, but EPA really doesn't. If we look at the best food that has EPA, you do have salmon, mackerel, you have any of the fatty fish. You also have fish oil, and all of those have plenty of EPA. But there's one additional food that has some extra benefits that take this to the next level, and that would be cod liver oil as well as cod liver. But either cod liver oil or cod liver will give you EPA, but it also gives you two additional factors that can, like I said before, take it to the next level. Vitamin A and vitamin D. Vitamin A, and I'm talking about the active form called retinol, it helps the repair of the internal skin of the body, the sinuses, 
the colon, the lungs, the inside of the arteries. Vitamin A has potent anti-inflammatory effects. It can also help uh, decrease atherosclerotic placking in animal studies, but adding vitamin D in there takes it to the next level. In one study out of a thousand compounds, vitamin D was the most effective to prevent damage to the internal layer of your arteries. This is why a lot of people take it for high blood pressure because it increases nitric oxide through that inside layer called the endothelial layer. Vitamin D decreases the stiffness of the arteries. It's a potent anti-inflammatory. It helps to stabilize plaquing so the plaquing doesn't plug up an artery. It also has been known to help prevent rupturing and decrease arterial calcification with the help of vitamin K2. So the number one best food for unclogging your arteries or maintaining the health of the arteries to prevent a heart attack or stroke is cod liver oil or cod liver. And again, you can buy it in the can. Make sure it's wild caught. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide. Major updates on the body types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.